Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day 43 of Lent. Today is Spy One Wednesday, the day on which Judas betrayed Christ. And we only have three more days of, of these meditations, three more days of Lent after this. And we're once again doing these meditations from Bishop Jacques Bossuet. And they are from Meditations for Lent by um, put out by Sophia Institute Press. I put up these meditations on YouTube and Spiritus TV and video. And then they do go up on all the audio podcast apps. And uh, I throw up an image on screen. There's nothing to watch, nothing to look at. You just listen and meditate. And we're going to get going here, get our Spy Wednesday meditation done. And here we go. Day 43, Spy Wednesday. Washed of our sins. In the warmer regions of the east, bathing was frequent. And after one had washed in the morning, and then again during the day, all that remained for the evening was to wash the feet so that the grime of one's comings and goings could be cleansed. This is the sense in which we are to take the words of the spouse in the Song of Songs. I had bathed in my feet. How could I soil them? Song of Songs 5.3 Jesus make, makes use of this image to teach his followers that after they had been washed of their greater sins, they still need to take care to purify themselves of those small sins they commit during the normal course of life. A soul that, love God's, that loves God never finds anything that offends him to be minor. If we neglect to purify ourselves of these faults, they, were pla they will place our soul in a deadly state, imperceptibly weakening its powers in such a way that little strength will remain to resist great temptations which can be defeated only by very ardent charity. He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not all of you. John 13.10 By these words, Jesus teaches us that we are not permitted to neglect lesser sins, for this is what he wished to signify by the washing of feet. In order to peer deeper into this mystery, we should see that the care he takes to wash the feet of the apostles at the moment when he is about to institute the Eucharist teaches us that the time when we ought to purge ourselves of our venial sins is when we are preparing for communion, that most perfect union with Jesus Christ. To this union, our sins are so great an obstacle that if we were to die before having expiated them, the beatific vision would be delayed perhaps for centuries. We ought then to feel all the more obliged to purify ourselves of these sins before communion, because it is by communion that they are chiefly removed, the greater ones having been removed by the sacrament of penance. Neglect of these faults can proceed to such an excess that not only does our attachment to these sins become dangerous, which it always is, but even mortal, for the one who cares only about the sins that would damn him shows that it is punishment alone that he fears, and that he does not truly love justice. That is to say, he does not love God as he ob is obliged to do. Such a one should fear to lose what remains to him of the divine fire of charity. Let us then carefully wash ourselves, not only our hands and our head, but also our feet, for approaching the Eucharist. Jesus teaches his apostles the seriousness of this obligation when he says to them, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. John 13, 8. This is not only because our sins retard the beatific vision and our perfect union with God, but because to neglect to wash them may bring a dangerous chill between our soul and Christ and even become deadly. Wash yourself, Christian. Wash yourself of all your sins, even the least of them, when you are about to approach the holy table. Wash your feet with care. Renew yourself entirely, lest you eat the body of the Savior unworthily. Even when we are not completely unworthy, 
with that indignity that renders us unworthy of the body and blood of the Savior. We may still be unworthy to receive great graces, without which we cannot overcome great weaknesses, nor the great temptations of which life is full. Lord, wash my feet, so that I can say with the spouse, I have bathed my feet, how could I soil them? Purity is a magnet for attracting purity. The whiter one's clothing, the more noticeable are the stains upon it. The cleaner one is, the more one should avoid becoming soiled. Let us desire to be counted among those of whom it is written that they are spotless before the throne of God. Revelation 14.5 To this goal we should aspire, remembering the lovely teaching of St. Augustine that although we cannot live here below without sin, we can leave this life without sin, because while our sins are many, the remedies for healing them are not wanting. And there is the meditation for today. You know, in our day and age, a, a priest or a bishop giving a homily, and that's what I'm sure this was, most of these meditations from Bishop uh, Bosway are, are homilies or sermons. Um, you know, in, in our day and age, a priest or a bishop um, receives criticism even for giving a homily about the necessity of of receiving the Holy Eucharist without mortal sin on their soul. Um, you know, that's considered, you know, controversial in, in uh, normie Catholic circles. Can you imagine living in a day and age where not only was that not controversial, but that uh, a bishop would give a, such a sermon on the necessity of of cleansing oneself of, of venial sin before receiving and the importance of that. Um, I hope one day our I hope one day we get back to that to where people are are that concerned about about cleansing themselves of venial sin before the Eucharist. Um. So yeah, that's that's a great meditation to meditate on prior to tomorrow, Monday, Thursday. You know, which is is the institution of the Eucharist. And I never before thought about um you know, we hear that the washing of the feet is you know, is 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 Christ showing us how to be a a servant leader or, you know, whatever, whatever modern human resources term you want to invent for, for that sort of stuff. Um, we, we don't often hear how it, it's a, an example of, of cleansing ourselves of, of venial sin prior to the Eucharist. So that was, I never actually heard that before. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So anyways, uh, today is by Wednesday. So uh, meditate upon the betrayal of Christ. Meditate on what you need to do to prepare yourself for receiving the Eucharist at uh, you know tomorrow's Maundy Thursday Mass, and prepare for for the Passion, the upcoming Passion. So well, thank you all for listening or watching this. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a blessed Spy Wednesday, and I will see you all again tomorrow on Monday, Thursday.